we had JFK uh, with the, the first you know, human on, on the moon uh, shot over half a century ago. We have the hydrogen energy earth shot, which was the first one. And there was a second one, which is the long duration energy um, storage earth shot. And there'll be a handful of other earth shots. And so the first was hydrogen, one, 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 this bold, easily articulated message of one dollar for one kilogram of clean hydrogen in one decade. This is what Dr. Sunita Satyapal, the director of hydrogen and fuel cells program at the U.S. Department of Energy, emphasized in her talk at the World Energy Storage Day last year. President Biden's 2021 infrastructure law calls for setting up at least four hydrogen hubs in the U.S. with $8 billion of federal funds being earmarked for it. In India, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has announced India's ambitious green hydrogen mission for faster decarbonization of industrial segments by focusing use of renewable energy for generating green hydrogen for fertilizer and petroleum refining industry. However, you must be wondering how far are we from the $1 per kg target today? You would be surprised to see how we have a clear pathway to achieving this target in the next section of this video. More importantly, Dr. Sunita Satyapal also presented a definitive and realistic path to reach the Earth's shot of $1 hydrogen. How do we actually get to $1? So part of that involves, you know, getting the cost of renewables down, capital cost, operating cost, and we're looking at all pathways. It's not only electrolysis. One important takeaway here was that the cost of hydrogen consists of three main components, which are the electricity cost, the electrolyzer cost, and cost of storage, transportation, and operation and maintenance. Second takeaway here was that for hydrogen price to come down to $1, the cost of electricity which is a major component in the price of green hydrogen, needs to drop to $20 per megawatt hour, that is 2 cents per kilowatt hour by 2030, from the current cost of $50 per megawatt hour. Also, the second biggest component in the price of hydrogen, which is the cost of electrolyzer, needs to drop from $1,500 per kilowatt at the moment to under $150 per kilowatt by 2030, which is a whooping 90% reduction. Many other technologies such as solar photovoltaic and lithium-ion batteries have achieved over 90% cost reduction during past 10-15 years. Through a combination of technology advancements, identifying scalable markets at different price points through appropriate policy interventions and scaling up of manufacturing. Is that even possible for green hydrogen technologies? For that, we need to take a look at an interesting analysis by Kotham Raj VS former clean technique manufacturing expert at Niti Aayog, the policy think tank for government okay. of India. And alkaline electrolysis and firm electrolysis, the prices have been dropping, uh, especially in China, uh, the, the prices are dropping really low. That for alkaline technology, all we need is nickel and, uh, uh, and not huge quantities, so it's fine. The only area in, in an electrolysis where critical minerals are an issue our PEM technology. So if you are dependent upon PEM, you are dependent upon uh, an important noble metals like platinum, gold and iridium. And that is exactly why Dr. Karsten Schmidt, the MD of the Sun Group Ode Chlorine Engineers Japan, showcased the latest AWE, that is alkaline water electrolysis element made out of nickel. He added, This element uh, is quite similar to the chloracali element, what we developed now over the last 50 years and where we have already 10 gigawatt installed capacity in the market and for these kind of elements we have an existing supply chain and manufacturing side of approximately one gigawatt this in group is currently the number one supplier for industrial scale electrolyzers in the world but that was not all dr schmidt also mentioned <laughs> Green hydrogen is one product, but we for sure can continue also to produce other products like, for example, ammonia, methanol or methane. And that brings us to green ammonia. More on that in the last section of this video. Dr. Schmidt presented these incredible insights as a part of the 5th World Energy Storage Day, the Global Conference and Expo on the 22nd of September last year. The 24-hour marathon conference had more than 150 speakers, including industry veterans, policymakers, academia, innovators, and professionals from around the world. 
The event comprised of 16 sessions on stationary energy storage, e-mobility, green hydrogen and manufacturing and innovation. In addition to that, 10 expert-led workshops were conducted on a range of subjects like solar plus storage, EV charging infrastructure, energy storage systems, EV battery fire and safety, circular economy, energy access and even urban air mobility. If you missed it, absolutely no need to worry. An even bigger conference and expo is coming up on the same day this year. That is the 22nd of September 2022, which we will be streaming live for free, but only to pre-registered attendees. Click on the link given in the i button or the video description to sign up for your free access pass. In case you miss the live streaming, you can watch the entire conference and workshops on IESA Academy whose link is also available in the video description. You can also watch last year's conference and workshops on IESA Academy. However, please note that the conference and workshops are available for free only during the live stream. So don't forget to sign up and rest assured that we will give you timely reminders leading up to this year's live stream. The challenge with hydrogen does not stop even if we reach the target of $1 per kilo though. Because that hydrogen must be stored till the time it is needed. But storing hydrogen is also extremely difficult. Angel of ammonia, um, we quite like to show this graphic here. Um, the city of Rostock, which is the largest city in our area, um, of about 200 inhabitants, needs uh, uh, around 80 megawatt offshore wind power to be fully powered by renewable energy. Um, and if we want to address for Dunkelflaute for energy security um, and so store this energy required for Rostock for an entire week, we would need uh, an hypothetical storage um, storage container of uh, the size of two football field times the highest uh, church uh, in Rostock, which is about, about 100 meters. So this is, of course, a hypothetical um, 60 bar uh, hydrogen storage here. Uh, which is that was Dr. Angela Kruth, Head of Materials for Technology Group at Libnus Institute for Plasma Science. Even when it comes to applications that require liquid fuel, ammonia works out to be much more efficient than hydrogen, as she explained here. And for uh, liquidification of, of hydrogen, as you know, we need a very low temperature of minus uh, 250 degrees. In comparison, uh, ammonia uh, is, is already liquidized at minus 33 degrees. So you know, refrigerator temperature and or uh, at room temperature, you, all, all you need is a small pressure of nine bar. All said and done, ammonia can turn out to be the perfect solution to the problem of storage and transportation of hydrogen. And don't forget to like this video and pull our trending videos into your recommendation scroll and please subscribe. Plus, turn on the notification bell to get a heads up when we upload a new video. Thank you very much for watching right till the end. You can also subscribe to our Emerging Technology Radio podcast to stay up to date on emerging technology trends at www.etn.news on Libsyn, iTunes, Spotify and other platforms where you get your favorite podcasts. Check out our other videos on green hydrogen, electric vehicles and urban air mobility from the World Energy Storage Day Conference 2021.